Hey everyone, well, welcome to church. Uh, this is very unique. This is very, I'm kind of speechless, you know, with everything that's going on in the world. I just want you to know I love you. We're praying for you. Uh, we're here for you. And uh, we will not be shaken. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, anything that can be shaken, it will be shaken. But there is an unshakable kingdom that you are a part of, that I'm a part of. It is called the kingdom of God. And Jesus said that kingdom is on the inside of you. And so um, in this season, we're going to hold on to the kingdom of God. We're going to hold on to kingdom truths. Well, today uh, I was going to be starting a series called The Talking Church. And I felt like I needed to uh, stay on that uh, path because I really do believe it's going to be a very pivotal message for our church and I'm talking about the power of when the church talks to God when the church talks to each other and when the church talks to the world and right now uh, we desperately need to be talking to God talking to each other and talking to our world and so I'm actually very excited about this series we're going to be talking about this for a few weeks and I believe it's going to help you I believe it's going to give you some direction as we move forward and as we um we're just on this journey together. We're literally taking it day by day. I do want to remind you, please follow at City Light Vegas on uh, uh, Facebook, on Instagram. Make sure to follow the City Light Vegas YouTube channel, our podcast channel, uh, just to stay connected with us and connected with everything uh, that God is doing through us and everything God is speaking to us at this moment. And um, we're going to do this, y'all. All right, I'm going to read Psalm 27, and um, I'm actually going to read the whole thing, all of Psalm 27, just because I believe the word is so powerful. And then we're going to look at this text um, in greater detail. But it says this, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter, and in the day of trouble he will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies and all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, seek my face, and my heart says to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you uh, who have been my help, cast me not off. Forget, uh, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And now verse 8 says this. It says, You have said to me, Seek my face. And my heart says back to you, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Today, I want to talk about the invitation of God in seasons of fear. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come now to your word, and we pray that you would speak to us in these moments. I thank you, Lord, that uh, you are not limited by um, these kind of seasons. You're not limited by these kind of gatherings. But Lord, right where people are watching, right where people are at, no matter where they're at in their faith journey, no matter how they found us today, no matter if they're gathering with friends and family or they're all alone, whether they're healthy or sick, Lord, I thank you that today you are with us. And I thank you that, Lord, I can hear the invitation of the Holy Spirit calling out to us in this moment. And Lord, we want to respond correctly in the name of Jesus. Speak to us now 
And everyone said, amen, and amen, and amen. And I want to give you three things I see from the text that are so important and I believe that are going to help us, especially in this very critical moment in the history of our world. And the first of this, I will choose to not let fear in my heart. I will choose to not let fear in my heart. David begins this psalm in verse 1. It says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He goes on to say in verse 3 that my heart will not be afraid. My heart, the very core of who I am, the very centerpiece of who I am, the, 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 very, um, the very true essence of who I am as a person. David says, I will not allow my heart to fear. Now, I read today that there are 366 verses in Scripture that say, do not fear. And one author wrote, there's even one, not only for every day of the year, but even for a leap year, and we're in a leap year this year. 366 times, God says, do not fear. Do not be afraid. Be courageous. Be strong. Do not fear. Be not afraid. I want you to think about that. When David says... I will not fear. Fear When David says, whom shall I fear? When David says, my heart will not be afraid, he's not in denial. The reason he's saying what he's saying is because he is afraid, because life can be scary, because there are moments of uncertainty. There are moments of what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, it, it seems like in our nation for literally about two weeks now, we have just gotten bad news after bad news after bad news. And uh, it's been unrelenting. It has not gotten any better. It just continues to get worse. That's just where we are right now. So in the midst of it, David says, I will not be afraid. Why would he say, I will not be afraid? Because he was afraid. Why would he say, I will not let my heart be afraid? Because fear was all around him. David was saying this, I'm in a very scary circumstance, but I refuse to allow what is going on around me to get on the inside of me. So I'm going to make the choice to not let fear rule my heart, rule my mind, rule my imagination. Life can be very scary. And here's, here's an amazing thing about fear. Here's what fear means. Here's the definition of fear. It means the anticipation of danger. Isn't that kind of where we're living right now? God, what's the next thing that's going to happen? What's the next bad news that's going to happen? What's the next thing they're going to say? What's the next death toll going to be? What's the next amount of infections? that I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Am I going to have a job? Do I, do I have a job today? Have I just lost my job? What's going to happen tomorrow? I mean, we are in that place of pure fear where people's only anticipation is danger. So David says, I refuse to anticipate danger. I refuse. I'm not in denial about it. I'm just not going to live my life in anticipation of things just getting worse and worse and worse. So when David says in Psalm 23, one of the most famous scriptures in all the Bible, he says, I will not fear. What, what does that mean? Um, it doesn't mean that we don't feel fear. It doesn't mean that we're in denial about our fear. It means that fear is not going to make our decisions. Fear may be in the vehicle with us, but we are not allowing fear to drive. I'm not in denial about the emotions I'm feeling. I'm not in denial about the uncertainty that is all around me. I'm just not letting it make my decisions. I'm not living from a place of an anticipation of danger. I'm believing God and I'm asking you in this season, do not let fear lead you. You know, Jesus said that in the last days, people's hearts would fail. Think about this. They would fail from fear. Um, I, I want you to think about what Jesus was really saying. He was saying people were going to die because of the fear all around them. Literally, uh, they didn't have the language for it maybe 2,000 years ago like we do today, but for us, we would say people would have heart attacks. People would get sick because of fear. People's hearts would fail because of fear. People would literally die because of fear, not because of a virus, because today it's the coronavirus and yesterday 
it was a different kind of flu and before that it was a different kind of flu and before that it was a housing crisis and before that it was a 9-11 and before that it was a different kind of outbreak and before that it was, I mean, there's, there's always been things in the world that cause fear. But Jesus said, what's gonna, what's gonna literally cause people to, to live in this panic state is not necessarily the thing that's going on in the world, but the fear that they're allowing in their hearts. I just want to ask you, I want to ask you in this season, choose to not let fear in your heart. Don't anticipate danger. This is John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Think about that. I do not give to you as the world gives. Jesus saying this is a different kind of peace. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. He says, my peace I give to you, but it is not like the world's peace. The world's peace is completely 100% circumstantial. If life is good, I'm good. If life is bad, I'm bad. If life is peaceful, I'm peaceful. If life is not peaceful, I'm not peaceful. Jesus says, I'm offering you a different kind of peace. It is a supernatural peace that the world cannot give you. And hear me, friend, if the world can't give it to you, then the world can't take it away from you. Wow. Get this in your heart today. In Jesus' name, I'm just going to fill you with with the word of God. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Now remember that the Apostle Paul is writing Philippians from house arrest. He is in prison saying, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That's the old King James, but I'm reading from the New Living. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Look at that. The Apostle Paul says that in the midst of very trying times, let people see your character. Let people see your consideration. Let people see that you're kind. Let people see that you're serving. Let people, let people see that your uh, social media posts look different than theirs. That your actions in the grocery store right now look different than theirs. That your response to the layoff looks different than theirs. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Paul says, always remember that the coming of the Lord Jesus is imminent. We should live our life with that in mind. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. This is one of those moments. Don't just tell God what you need and stop. Tell God what you need, and we have a lot of needs right now, and thank him for all he's done. So, the way that my faith is built in this season is by remembering how faithful he's been. God hears my needs. God hears my bills. God hears what's going on. God, there's a lot going on. God, there's sickness all around me. God, I'm, 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 I'm very fearful. I'm very discouraged. Tell God what you need, but thank him for all he's done. Because as you begin to remind yourself of his faithfulness, that's where faith is going to be built in your spirit. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. Supernatural peace. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Literally, your peace, God's peace, excuse me, will become like a bodyguard. It will become like a bouncer at a club. It will become a security guard to your heart and to your mind. And the peace of God will protect you in this moment. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Paul says you're going to have to guard your thought life when you're going through a tough season. So I'll check the news, but I am fixing my thoughts on the word. I'll keep up to date, but I'm fixing my thoughts on the word. I'll, uh, you know, for, for me, I just want you to hear that practically. You know, today the governor of Nevada got up and said a few things. I watched that. Uh, the president got up this morning. I watched that. Uh, I read a few uh, articles and a few headlines just to know what was going on in our day. And then that's it. I'm, I'm checking the news, but I'm fixing my thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. I've got to think on things that are excellent and worthy 
of praise. This is Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. I don't know if y'all just heard what God just said. Joshua, keep speaking the word. Keep saying the word. Keep speaking the word. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. That word meditate literally means to, to mutter under your breath, to just speak constantly day and night. You get a, ver a verse, you get a promise, you get something from God and you just say it and you 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 mutter it. This, this word meditate comes from a uh, agricultural term that cows do. It's called um, to chew the cud. What a cow will do um, because they have more stomachs than us, they are able to eat the grass, they swallow it, then they regurgitate it, they chew on it again to get more nutrients out of it, then they swallow it, then they regurgitate it, then they chew on it again, and then they, and they, they will do this all throughout the day, getting the max, uh, the, the, the absolute max amount that they can get out of the grass that they're eating. In the same way, we are to speak the word and mutter it and chew on it and say it and say it and get everything we can out of the word. God is telling Joshua, do not be afraid. Meditate on the word. Have I not commanded you, verse nine, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Now that's a really bold statement. I, I, I you know, it, you kind of read it and it's kind of insensitive. God goes, don't be afraid, be courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. God's with you. And I think we could kind of read that through our kind of American, you know, uh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps or, you know, you got to toughen up. I don't think God is saying, hey, Joshua, you need to toughen up. I think God is saying that if you will meditate on the word and if you will speak the word and if you will obey the word, that fear will leave, that courage will come, that discouragement will leave. So God is not saying to toughen up. God is saying commit to the word of God. So number one, I will choose to not let fear in my heart. Number two, I will say yes to the invitation of God. I will say yes to the invitation of God. David uh, is in a very serious moment. He is afraid. His enemies are all around him. David feels surrounded. Just think back to Psalm 27. He feels surrounded. The enemy is all around him. He is fearful. He is afraid. He is discouraged. And I want you to think about what happens right in the middle of this verse, right in the middle of the uncertainty, right in the middle of all that's going on. David says in verse eight, but God, I can hear you calling to me. Seek my face. And he says, and your face, Lord, I will seek. I want you to think about this. In the midst of the chaos, in the midst of the noise, in the midst of the fear, in the midst of the uncertainty, in the middle of David being surrounded by his enemies, in all that is going on in David's life, David says, God, I can hear you whispering to me to seek your face. Can I tell you that in this moment right now with everything going on in our lives, with everything going on in our world, with everything happening, if, if you could just get quiet enough to turn off the news and turn off the noise and turn off the fear, you will hear the still small voice of the Holy Spirit saying, seek my face. I want to talk to you. I want to lead you. I want to guide you. David hears the whisper of heaven. And let me just remind you, that's what God does. God whispers. This, there's an amazing passage of scripture in 1 Kings chapter 19, where Elijah is running for his life. Again, very fearful. The, the Bible's full of it, y'all. The Bible is full of awesome men and women of God that are in situations that are bigger than themselves and they're scared and they're fearful and they desperately need God and they need God's presence. They need God's guidance. They need God's voice. They need God's instruction. In first uh, Kings chapter 19, as the prophet Elijah is desperately in need for a word from God, the Bible says that a massive whirlwind comes, but Elijah said God was not in the wind. 
He says, then there was an earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. He says, then there was a massive fire, but God was not in the fire. But then there was, and I love, I love the, the language here. There was a gentle whisper and God was in the gentle whisper. And I'm telling you, this is a season for Americans especially where if you'll, if you'll choose to, you can actually get quiet and hear the gentle whisper of heaven. Or you can continue to just let your life be as noisy and loud and fearful as it always is. But if you'll get quiet enough, and right now you can get quiet enough, if you'll get quiet enough long enough, God will speak to you soon enough. Because we're in a moment where we can actually in the midst of all the fear and uncertainty and how are we going to pay the bills and how are we going to get through this, there's also this invitation from God saying, I want to speak to you in this moment. Look at Romans chapter 5, verse 3 through 5. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. We can rejoice when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us. They help us. Think about this. You can make your problems and trials help you in this season. They help us develop endurance. Endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Someone might be asking, why would I rejoice in this moment? Jamin, why would I rejoice when I'm in a, a problem or a trial or, or an issue? Let me just say it as bluntly as I can, because we have no other choice. <laughs> we have no other choice, y'all. We're, we're in a problem. We're in a trial. We are in a tribulation. So we might as well rejoice because we really don't have anything else we can do. And when we rejoice... It leads to endurance, it leads to character, and it leads to hope. And that means that if we don't rejoice, and the opposite of that would be complaining, it will lead to weakness, it will lead to a lack of character, and it will lead to more fear. And so in this season right now, hear the invitation of the Holy Spirit saying, seek my face. Hear the invitation of the Holy Spirit saying, rejoice. Hear the Holy Spirit saying, pray, talk to me worship go after me go after my presence and it will lead to endurance it will lead to character it will lead to hope god is a god who whispers and in this moment we have to get quiet enough to hear the whisper of the holy spirit in times of pain change chaos loss transition there is an opportunity to encounter the presence of the Lord, to hear from the Lord, to go to a new place in God and to grow your faith, to lift your eyes to heaven. There's a really amazing scripture in Isaiah chapter six, verse one, where Isaiah says, in the, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Isaiah said this, it was a season of transition, of pain. It was a season of loss. It was a season of uncertainty. And in that moment, in that year, in that season, I saw God. Can I tell you that in this season, you can see Jesus. You can see the Lord. You can lift your eyes above everything else and see what God is speaking to you and how he's leading you and how he's guiding you. You can get a word from heaven in this season, y'all. And I'm telling you, we should believe God that God's gonna speak to us in a profound and unprecedented way in this moment. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 18. So we don't look, this word look means we don't pay attention to, we don't contemplate on, we don't focus on, we don't look to. Think about this. So we don't look at the troubles that we can see. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that can't be seen. For the things we can't see 
now will, or excuse me, for the things we can see will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. And here's the last point that I want to give you uh, today is I will have hope. I will have hope. Here's how David ends this amazing psalm. And I, I, I would really encourage you, read this psalm. I'd read it every day this week. Get it in your spirit. This is how he ends the psalm. Um, he's talking about how he's afraid. He's talking about how the enemies are all around him. He's talking about how God is inviting him to this new place to seek his face. And then he ends with hope. He ends with, and I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, or I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So I will wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage, wait for the Lord. David ends this amazing psalm saying, I'm going to see the goodness of God through all of this. I'm going to see the faithfulness of God through all of this. I'm going to, I'm going to see God's goodness in, in this. When, when I come out on the other side, I'm going to see the goodness of God. Now, here's one of my favorite verses on hope. Um, because hope is something we don't talk enough about. And I, I want to talk about hope more um, this year. And I, I want this scripture on hope to get in your spirit because I think it's a really weird place to talk about hope. And it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. Paul says, these three things will remain. In other words, in heaven, these will always be here. They're never going away. He says, Tongues will cease, prophecy will cease. A lot of things are going to cease. He goes, but these three things will never cease. These will remain, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Paul says that in heaven, we will have hope. Here's what I want you to get in your heart right now and in your mind and in your spirit, that whether you are surrounded by enemies and we are being attacked by this coronavirus in 2020, or whether we have been in heaven for a million years, God is asking us to be a people of hope, a people of expectation. I, I started this talk talking about how fear is this, um, this expectation of danger. Well, hope is the positive expectation of something good. Think about it, that we've been in heaven for 10 million years and we're still a people of hope a positive expectation. Think about this, that it's just going to get better, that we're going to see more of who God is, and we're going to see more of the faithfulness of God, and we're going to, God's going to reveal more of what he has, and what he has for us, and what he can do. We are a people of hope now. We will be, we will be a people of hope then. We need hope right now in this very dark hour, and we need hope on the mountaintop. We need hope in the valley. We need hope uh, in this season, and we're going to be a people of hope in a in hundred million years from now when we're not even thinking about the coronavirus. God is the God of hope, Romans 15 says. And David says, I choose to have hope. I choose to have a positive expectation that things are getting better, that I will see the goodness of God, that God will continue to outdo himself with his awesome power. And so... We will see the goodness of the Lord. We will come out of this fire tried like gold. We will see the faithfulness of God. We will look back on this moment one day, not, not tomorrow, probably not in a month, but one day we'll look back and say we heard the invitation of God. God brought us closer. God did something deep on the inside of us through this moment. Our appreciation is going to grow. Our love for God is going to grow. Our love for other people is going to grow. And our love for God is going to grow. And so I want to, I want to ask you to not take this lightly. I, I want to say this. I am not taking this virus lightly, and I'm not taking what it's doing to our world lightly and what it's doing to our economy lightly. But let me just also say we should never take the word of God lightly. These are eternal truths that endure these are eternal truths that have sustained the church for thousands of years and have sustained the people of God for thousands of years. And let me remind you that the flower will fade, that the earth 
will go away. But God said, but my word will last forever. And so I'm not preaching just some cute little thing to get us through a few weeks of quarantine. I'm giving you the eternal word of God that will sustain us no matter what has come, no matter what is currently happening, and no matter what will come in the future, God's word will sustain his people and it will sustain us through this season. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just, um, right now I cancel the spirit of fear and I cancel the assignment of hell on your people. I declare healing and miracles be released into your people right now. I declare that God, we will rejoice even in trial and hardship and that Through this, our endurance will grow, our character will grow, our faith will grow, our hope will grow, our love for you and our love for our neighbor will grow. Lord, I just thank you that you will turn what the enemy meant for evil and you'll work it for our good. Um, In the name of Jesus, we pray for a cure to this virus. We pray for a vaccine to this virus. We pray that it would Um, that it would stop. We pray for a miracle to happen in our world, for the sickness to stop, for the deaths to stop. And Lord, for something to turn in this whole situation. It has been uh, so much bad news and so much dark news over the last week. And Lord, we're praying for a divine Holy Spirit turnaround. You said if we would humble ourselves, if we would turn from our wicked ways if we would call to you you would hear from heaven and you would heal our land that is our prayer heal our land in the name of jesus and give us the patience and the endurance to get through this light affliction because we know on the other side of it as is an eternal weight of glory bless your people father i pray bless your people protect them protect our church in jesus name we pray amen and amen. I love you guys so much. And um, I guess we're going to see you next week <laughs> doing this again. Make sure that you're following us on Facebook and Instagram as we uh, go live. We're receiving communion almost every day. I'm praying with you. I'm giving you something from the word and uh, hopefully just encouraging you through this moment. Stay connected. Call somebody. Talk to somebody. Um, encourage someone while you need encouragement during this moment. And the promise of God is is that if you will refresh others, God would refresh you. So I'm praying for you and I love you. If you need anything, reach out to us and uh, we'll see you real soon. God bless you. Hey everyone, it's Jabin here. I'm praying that this video was a blessing to you. Now remember two things. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you're up to date with everything that we're doing here. And also, if City Light has been a blessing to you, why don't you hit that give button and give something to help us continue to take this message, not only to Las Vegas, but to the world. And we'll see you real soon.